So please let me know when should I get started. Okay. Let's just wait for a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Some of it. Let's see. Yes. Case K. Okay. Sure. We can do or do you want to do that? I don't care. Just have a good Okay. Yeah, good. All right, uh, welcome everyone to the last uh, particle theory seminar uh, for this quarter. We're, today, we're very pleased to have Lin Feng from Brown University to talk uh, about uh, new inflationary probes of axial dark matter. Um, thanks for inviting me. Um, it's a great pleasure to show up again uh, in New Chicago. Last time presenting here is like four years ago, and uh, now it's like uh, totally different stuff. Um, so if, in this page, you get most of the meta information you, you need. Um, um, so the talk was based on two papers. Uh, the one, like say, in last year was like a finish with uh, Yunjai, the audience and the host, uh, and also with uh, Gigi back in Brown. And then uh, for a while, we, we think about this rather hard and then trying to move on. And then this like a, this work uh, with Shingao uh, in, in Harvard. And in this title page, I'm trying to make this uh, very remote connection with okay, all the fields involved, okay, the okay, symmetries, and a collider ring, because this is a cosmology collider talk. Uh, this is not true, though. Um, so as an outline, I'm just simply, uh, so, okay, we found super experts right here. So this may be too pedagogical, uh, but still, I need to have a brief introduction of, okay, the context of Axion and uh, the cosmology um, that I'm going to talk about. And then, then as a prelude, and the first part of the talk is uh, about the first paper, it's the new mechanism, um, well, which opens the uh, window for post-inflation uh, uh, inflation reaction. And then we're trying to develop the idea and pushing it uh, further, like say, okay, making it more observable okay, uh, by introducing inflation as a cosmological collider, um, not the new idea anyways. And then now we have, okay, two parts. Okay, one is the axiom physics, which is pretty popular nowadays. And then another piece, which is called cosmology collider physics is also very great. And just like put these two things uh, together, boom, you get the cosmology collider of axion. Uh, and we will 
okay, show some details uh, and then summarize. So first of all, like say, uh, what's the axiom? Uh, we start from this uh, old argument uh, of the, okay, or let's say motivated by the strong CP problem, uh, where you have a piece of Lagrangian, which is CP odd, and you never see that, okay, if you find this bug at CERN, uh, the reason why, or part of the reason why is it's experimentally proved to be very small. So like uh, this term, uh, like uh, micros macroscopically uh, could be, interpolated okay as a cartoon uh something as the neutron EM where the ups and downs are actually not perfectly aligned well in practice we do not they do not have to uh, but if there's a macroscope like a classical angle theta on a field right here and uh, these things works like uh, like a water molecule or something then you know that things get polarized and you get the uh, electric dipole moment and then the natural expectation uh, is something like the charge, which is of order one of the quarks, and the uh, uh, femtometer, which is the size of the neutron. And the, naively, okay, something rather observable would, would, would be observed. But nowadays, we're pushing a lot of, using a lot of techniques and pushing the experimental limit down to, okay, a very small number. Accounting for all, uh, like say, QCD details, um, loop factors, et cetera, it, it, okay, you can translate the observation as a theta angle uh, less than 10 to the minus 10. So this is a small dimensionless parameter, um, well, which could be anything between zero or two pi, but okay, it turns out to be zero, which is a specific number. So makes us wonder if there's any mechanism or symmetry that protect um, this uh, theta value and a, Mainstream, I would say, uh, answer to this is uh, by introducing the axion, uh, basically just wash your problem away like a detergent. So in particular here, I mean axion, okay, in the original meaning is the uh, QCD axion, which is a pseudo nabu boson, uh, which is very light. Um, so only gets mass from uh, QCD anomalies. Uh, so after you couple like this pseudo nabu goton boson as a phase of some PQ scalar, which like spontaneously broken at the scale of FA uh, as the decay constant, which is rather high. Once it pick up the coupling with the QCD uh, through, okay, fermions, uh, not necessarily new stuff, okay, it could be our standard model fermion or some vector like fermions, vector like quarks. You pick up, Okay, some coupling uh, that's like in compensation of the theta angle. If you plug in uh, chiral perturbation uh, theory uh, instead, uh, instead of model and then work out the uh, potential right here, you would find you actually minimize the potential when these two terms cancel and the dynamically you shift the, the theta angle to like um, zero. So, okay, the problem solved. Of course, this is like a lot of lot of further detail. I'm not going to elaborate right here, but this is just part of the motivation. Another motivation, like say, why axion story now is are like say okay popular is also because the existence of dark matter, and as as um, indicated right here, this FA um, the decay constant for many good reasons uh, must be very large and. It turns like equivalently the axion coupling with standard model shall be highly suppressed by this high scale FA, the, the, the decay constant or the symmetry breaking scale. So it's a naturally a, a good dark matter candidate. And okay, this pie chart we have seen so many times, dark matter just use up most of the matter budget of our universe. So we see okay, many indisputable evidence of dark matter existence in many different places, many different channels and many different scales. So, so it's nice that the theory simultaneously provides us a good dark matter candidate and also solving uh, like have better motivations in the UV, like say strong CP problem. And as a, as a okay, Nambu goes on, pseudo Nambu goes on boson or a pseudo scalar field. Axion, if you just trace back in time, very often they're not, you will find most of the axion dark matter stories involve its history back in inflation era. So it's very interesting 
uh, question, and actually you can recognize several uh, patterns. Okay, how the Axian dark matter emerged um, during this era. So, in a very rough sense, things could be classified into two categories. Uh, okay, there are many more, I believe, but these are the okay, the, the standard the standard picture. So the first scenario uh, is a so-called free inflation reaction where your decay constant is large enough, um, which is greater than the characteristic, characteristic scale during inflation, the Hubble uh, over two pi, which is the effective uh, temperature right there. So the symmetry is already broken during inflation. And once you have a broken symmetry during inflation, uh, you need to like have a spontaneously breaking uh, happens there and you have a bath. And the, the bath of axions show up as a phase of some uh, like complex scalar field as an angle. And this angle, like say, if you have starting with a very local piece with a uniform theta angle, and after like say many e folds of inflation, it expands and it just become like say the observable universe. So in this picture, we start with a uniform okay, phase of axion or roughly speaking the same phase. So the PQ breaking, uh, eventually uh, this phase will turn into uh, dark matter red density. But even though like say on the large scale, the average is like assured, um, the quantum perturbation still exists. Like say the field still walks stochastic. So like you cannot stop this quantum uh, walking. And uh, like the natural range of fluctuation just indicated by, well, this like thermal picture, like the effective, the effective temperature uh, of the distance space time is, or the hawking gibbons temperature is uh, H over two pi. The fluctuation range of this field is also like H over two pi and then divided by uh, basically the breaking scale, you get, the delta theta, or let's like say the fluctuation. And then this introduces you a strong isocurvature um, constraint, well, which can be translated right here. And if you plug in all the numbers here, AI is the um, power spectrum of isocurvature mode at large scale. And this is the curvature perturbation. And this is a very small number already. And then if this is the ratio is even smaller, which means like this number must be very small. That's the ideal curvature problem for a uh, uh, pre inflation reaction. What is the gamma? What is the gamma? Uh, yeah, gamma, like say, I forgot to mention, like gamma is basically the ratio of axion dark matter uh, or, 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 the, the, yeah, the, over the order dark matter, just got omega A over omega CDM. That's it. Yeah, I should, uh, but um, so here's just a, okay, a very, nutshell picture of what's the curvature versus what's isocurvature. So in the curvature, there are better definitions, okay, mathematically very uh, well-defined. But roughly speaking, curvature is where different components of a universe that could cause like curvature of perturbations, okay, because the okay, energy densities are different, uh, okay, uh, proportional each other in a certain way. While in isocurvature, or like say, if you want isocurvature mode, these fluctuations do not need to agree with each other. And then, okay, basically they are not related. So this is a typical thing that happens if you have like different fields during inflation. So for example, you translate one field into something and uh, another field into dark matter and that they do not, because these are quantum fluctuations, they do not have to be proportional to each other. And then you create isocurvature. This is what usually happens for like the actin dark matter because the dark matter comes from the axiom field and the uh, curvature comes from other fields, let's say. That's more directly related to inflation. And then uh, these are further details how to make dark matter out of this. Uh, this would be um, useful, like say, okay, how, how, how these mathematical things work out. But eventually, um, Okay, you have, you start with a non z zero uh, theta. Well, it could be random. Okay, some some order one offset, maybe very large, very very small, but not starting exactly at the minimum that's demanded by QCD. So what happens is eventually, okay, at the end of the day, we, it needs to relax, oscillate, and damp around its like a ultimate minimum. And this oscillation, like would 
just create because this oscillating fields actually uh, create okay equivalently creating non-relativistic coherent axiom particles and if you trace the energy density uh, evolution of like uh, such oscillating field you will see that after passing a certain point basically is where the age of universe is comparable to its internal frequency uh, then it starts to dilute on average as a to the like or the size of universe minus three or the inverse volume of the universe behave like cold dark matter that's uh, how the misalignment works in the nutshell so this is the first scenario and then we have to uh, introduce another one basically just reverse the condition where your symmetry breaking scale is so small uh, like say smaller than the equivalent temperature so you can think about it in two parallel ways uh, first of all is like say the random walking of uh, the field like say uh, the original complex PQ field is larger than fa so basically it random walks or just integrate over all the okay bumps and uh, trials right here so equivalently it is like a sitting at origin or you can have a thermal explanation uh, that the, the thermal correction of the potential just lit it up so you still have a, a, a unbroken phase um, and the symmetry eventually will still be some spontaneously broken like say after inflation where the Hubble like say decreases like till nowadays so at some point like the symmetry will break again at that point you will like you will have no preferred phase and anything everything happens at the smaller scale so every single piece of the the space choose a preferred direction to go and that they do not have to agree with each other so in that case you will have generated a lot of topological um, defects of inflation um, so these topological defects could be one dimensional like say cosmic strings or two dimensional um, domain walls and uh, here to avoid serious do serious domain wall problem uh, all across uh, the discussions we said that domain wall number equals one which could be achieved in, in certain set of models, or you can just introduce explicit breaking, uh, but that's not our point. And in this case, let's say the axion uh, dark matter density are actually dominated um, by these uh, topological defects, like the axion strings. Um, you can understand these as the vortices of the field. Okay, like say you get around like say this vortex, and the, the field value change by um, too high. So the string is very energetic. Um, the natural tension, like say how to like to measure, like say the energy stored in the string is of order f a squared, and then we know that f a is a very large number. So these are very energetic objects, and uh, they decay will dominate the relative density. And uh, this is certainly a non-trivial business. Uh, like say a, a very nice uh, paper, like say numerical simulation using a lot of advanced techniques. Um, trying to trace okay the field evolution and the, the scaling laws and the such um, at the end of the day we simply borrow um, their their arguments say fa if you want full dark matter then fa needs to be order 10 or 10 to the 11 gev okay due to some numerical subtleties um, all right so summarizing the the previous pictures so this is uh the map of qcd axion okay as dark matter so here we first notice this is the traditional boundary uh, where FA equals H over two pi. Uh, right here you have post-inflation reaction, and right here you have pre-inflation reaction phase. Uh, so here is a little delta, like or like the oasis where um, you are inherently free from isocurvature issues. Um, and uh, okay, there could be many interesting um, signals like okay. It's, more scale fluctuations you can observe. Um, but this is like squeezed by this line and also like say the current observation, like on non-observation of a large tensor to scalar ratio, though the Hubble is like really constrained right here. Um, and along this line, or like say around this region, you have the right um, relative density. While you go across the line, you, you see a lot of badlands right here. Uh, basically, is you Im immediately violating the current isocurvature constraint that I mentioned before. But across this line again, uh, where 
the FA is large enough compared to HI, you have this like peninsula of survivability. Um, and uh, of course, the red density would depend on FA and the simultaneously where you start, like say different theta angles. Um, but in general, right here, the picture is incompatible with high scale inflation. Uh, like say you ended up like around 10 to the 9 PE. That's uh, how it works. So now it rises to the first question, and that is what we need for the like say, or what we want for the first one is okay, just the, the problem we're trying to attack for the first paper is how can we expand the parameter space for the post inflationary axiom right here? Uh, just like a little triangle here uh, to okay, make it larger uh, uh, because it enjoys uh, certain, certain nice features. So here's the recast of this parameter space. So right here, we just not consider it uh, at the moment. Right here is the band where you have the right red abundance. Below you have insufficient, but you can aid it with like more dark, other dark matter from radiation um, or other mechanisms. And this is a, just a cartoon because it's not a very complicated idea, just like a, a trick we played. Um, is that originally you can like certainly dwell like or you 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 want to believe that according to this criteria you're living in a um, pre-inflationary case, but since uh, it's a little bit sarcastic, okay, this is called slow inflation, but actually the rolling of the inflaton even in this uh, minimum minimal like a single field inflation picture is still much much larger than the characteristic scale like of uh, like. Hubble during inflation. So you can imagine using this low roll to just like uplift the potential. And if the potential can be uplifted, so everything just shrinks back to like the origin, uh, you make like post inflationary accident in the regions uh, of, okay, pre inflationary uh, accidents. So this is a so called a heavy lifting mechanism. Um, so the Lagrange is rather simple. Actually, we only introduce this term. Uh, the, the rest is basically automatic. So we have kinetic terms, whatever. And this is the um, inflation or inflaton potential, uh, which causes like all the like, like inflation you, you want. And then we stay agnostic about it. Um, this is just a handy um, uh, like like uh, PQ potential or like the axiom potential, you see that the chi, the, the VAF of chi do pick up a VAF, like that's like proportional to FA, um, while the axiom is basically the phase of this field. Uh, it can replace it with other similar forms, but it's not the, the key point. And uh, the only new term is basically the interaction between the inflaton and uh, the PQ field. And then this term actually enjoys like some merit it respects u1 pq symmetry or like say uh in, ensures that axion is exactly uh massless only broken by like non perturbative effects later on uh this uh by introducing or like say only allowing derivative couplings of inflaton um, and also respect the shift symmetry of the of the uh, of the inflaton potential so it doesn't cause extra problems so for single field inflation, as mentioned, like the like in the inflationary background, like say where phi is homogeneously rolling, this would be replaced by uh, phi dot, or like say partial phi is basically taking the okay value background value of phi dot, and the phi dot is related to the primordial power spectrum uh, by such relation as mentioned. This is the uh, curvature power spectrum, and okay, according to Planck observation, we know very well, uh, like say phi dot is around square root phi dot is around 60 uh, h and sorry the axiom is still massless the axiom is still massless uh, no no the the, the pq symmetry is not broken during yeah. inflation um, pq symmetry is in this picture uh it's not broken it's not broken yeah so you uplift and, and, it and uh, you by this term by this term yeah but previously the I saw the in the post-inflationary yeah. uh, scenario, yeah. the PQ symmetry uh, also was not broken yeah. during the- Yeah, so that's why you make it post-inflationary, but in a different parameter regime, where you're supposed to be pre-inflationary, but 
it's actually post inflation. Sorry, I, I... so maybe we go back so to pre, pre inflation. The, the that's so like for post, this... post inflationary inflationary scenario, uh -huh. right? It's a it's a it's a it's always restored during during the inflation. Um, what do you mean by both? Post inflation, post inflation, yeah, is stored, the, restored. The sim symmetry is restored yeah. during inflation. Yeah. And the, the ISO curvature is coming from what? In there's no ISO curvature. Or there's like no large scale ISO curvature. Sorry. Because it's average now. Then you, you enlarge the parameter space for the post inflation. Yeah. Scenario. yeah. I, I, I'm not sure what does this do because it's a. Uh, it's just like uh, we, maybe we will see that better, like say, but this mm -hmm. means. Like previously, okay, if we according to the previous criteria, like FA is much much greater than that. that, that that's, is, the, that's the pre inflation. Yeah, but it, what what we are we are we are doing is basically say you can restore the symmetry in this regime. So basically, where you would be killed by iso curvature uh, or let's say without further mechanisms, now it's all good. So you have just basically opened up that part of parameter space. Okay. Yeah, we will have like more, more, more plots. But okay, yeah, I need to yeah move on. But by the way, we can actually the same goal by thermal restoration. Yes, that's say. good. Yeah, or or like say mechanisms. This is not the only way to do that, but this is like a like an another way to do that. So you can couple it with R, and then it's like a, yeah. We also mentioned that in our paper. You can just do that, like say with different terms. But yes. this is just an example, and then we choose this as a. Like say a, a benchmark, and if you measure, like say, just like calculate the effective PQ uh, scalar mass, okay, at the origin, uh, the effective mass, it receives this uh, piece, in, like a piece of okay correction, and it's positive, okay, according to our choice. And you know that square root phi dot is sixty, so phi dot is like thirty six hundred, and then you square it again. So this could be a rather large number. Of course, lambda, the cutoff needs to be large also, but in general, this yeah, is- What a, do you want the lambda to be? Uh, we choose the benchmark lambda to be like three times uh, 60 HI, so it's 180 as our benchmark, but as long as this like is sufficiently larger than uh, the five dot. Okay. I, I thought this lambda has to be greater than five dot. Yeah, it, it's greater. It's three times 60. It's one three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's a benchmark. Okay, it could be larger, but then it's like a paying the price of like a shrinking the further the parameter space, but it, it's fine. So as long as like say this effective mass is large enough, so like say it's like a lives on another branch of the, the mode expansion, uh, it's like typically a heavy, heavy, heavy field during inflation, then, then we are free of most of the, the problems. And the Previously, this heavy lifting mechanism that actually used uh, reverse, okay, just like to further break the, the Higgs symmetry or the electric symmetry during inflation. But right here, we are trying to use it to restore the peak symmetry instead. Um, so, okay, um, I only have like say 25 or like say half, a, half an hour left. I need to conclude right here. Uh, but okay, if you want more, more details, ask me Jai, instead. I'm just like trying to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you are the author, right? Like, but, but I'm here just uh, to count, like to show you, like saying what we what we got. So previously, um, you you need to like strictly like live below this line, um, and this is the band that gives the correct uh, dark matter reference. You can find other ways to dilute it. Okay, maybe injecting uh, entropy after. Um, after you start to oscillate, so like say some method domination um, to enhance it, but you are limited by this line anyways. Um, but according to our numerical benchmark, uh, and you uplift the potential by like R to phi. So now the line, the criteria, instead of H or like FA, like, um, like smaller than H over uh, two pi, now it's like move up, like say by two or three orders of magnitude, according to this numerical benchmark. And if you can further dilute it uh, with some mechanism, so without dilution, like say you expand, like say this uh, band, like say all the way up to right here and all the 
downward space get opened up. And if you can dilute it, uh, we can actually um, play it with like say early matter domination. Uh, you like say open up the parameter space, which is right here. This all new open up parameter space. And uh, many of these newly open parameter space are actually compatible with high scale inflation. If you are interested in this part, either theoretically or just a pure from a logical point of view that this could be tested in the near future. Uh, like for example, this is like to be tested uh, by CNBS4. Uh, this is the way to go. Uh, actually, there are quite, quite some um, fun discussions, uh, but I have to move on. So now let's have another question. So previously, uh, or the, the, the first part, we talk about like post-inflationary accidents only. So what if the similar mechanism applies to a pre-inflationary accident case where uh, FA is like much greater than H and you're not uplifting uh, by anything. So now you have like isocurvature, right? Isocurvature is an inherent property, like say that belongs to like this phase. And then now you introduce the interaction with inflaton, which is actually, you can translate it by curvature. So you are now have some interplay between curvature and isocurvature. Um, and as a okay, big spoiler right here, what we are going to discuss actually the uh, prim primordial non Gaussianities, uh, okay, because of like say non trivial interactions uh, between these fields. And okay, as mentioned, you can also call it like cosmological glider. Uh, the idea was first officially bring on the table by Shingao and uh, my other collaborator, he uh, back in 2009, and uh, recast it by. Uh, Lima and uh, Juan in uh, 2015 and have become rather popular afterwards. Uh, so this is just two toy showcases I made uh, where you have right here you have completely Gaussian distribution and the right here is like you inject insane amount of non Gauss entity uh, just otherwise we cannot see it uh, without computer. Uh, well you see certain patterns like how things change well they're certainly different and from the pattern difference uh, okay you, you, you are able to tell, like say, what's the lying, uh, underlying physics through, for example, in this case, is the distribution of axiom dark matter, which still remains like frozen at larger scales. Um, so have a very toy picture or like say a very simple statement is that if you have like some scalar fields and uh, these are essentially free fields during inflation, your density perturbation or like say, yeah, curvature perturbations are actually just effectively described by a Gaussian random field. And the mathematically, Gaussian random field is fully represented by its two point correlators, okay, the power spectrum. Because they are free fields, you can imagine they just cross each other without saying hi. So non trivial three point correlators are basically zero. Okay, maybe introduced at late times. But if you have non-trivial interactions between them, you will start to find like say non-trivial or like say non-zero three-point correlators or like say these different triangles um, in the observation like CMB or large-scale structures um, you want. And then you can just parameterize these things passing all the details like okay, two pi and whatever. Um, so naturally scales at uh, this like power spectrum square times this, like dimensionless number. And to give a hint, like say where we are right now. So for curvature modes, like they just, all these are like inflaton, um, we are able to probe all the 10 stuff, roughly speaking. Depends on a lot of stuff, but okay, this is uh, currently where we are. So because I'm a collider from logist, I need to start with a actual collider. And uh, this is a highly abstract, uh, picture of that. You may plug in any, like, or your favorite experiment here, uh, if you're experimentalist. But the, the common thing for, okay, ground based colliders are that we need to prepare the initial states very carefully, right? So you need to prepare the beams, aim them, all these, okay, spend billions of dollars to make sure they, like, you maximize. The production rate, like say some like your, your target process, right? And as a paradigm, how we make the discoveries, right? Like say we build this kind of okay, primarily okay, 
for discoveries. And the, for discovery, usually is uh, okay. Some heavy particles, okay, to be uh, to be like discovered, pops up, okay, from the interaction, and they are usually heavy. Uh, by heavy, in the sense that okay, they are much short lived than. Uh, it's not always true, but okay. Uh, let's say they are all, all always much shorter lived than the detector scale, right? You're, we are not pushing the detectors like femtometers away from the interaction point. This makes no sense because these things are okay. Well, we can imagine these things could be created, so it couples the standard model or all the light stuff, and then the width would be in principle in the same order of magnitude or orders of magnitude in the ballpark of its own mass. So it decays like way before it reaches anything. So instead of like looking looking for these heavy particles directly, what we claim for discovery is actually from the infinite far away asymptotic final state uh, it gives. And okay, it could be multiple species. And here I use okay, it's a photon as an example. And luckily we live in roughly flat space time, but we can use the standard trick of like invariant mass. So to just make just group momentum together and then you find a bump and then you okay find a mass. So that's how we find X, for example. And the things changes uh, if you move on to uh, cosmology collider. So in that case, the hope is that because now we haven't okay really be told relatively high scale inflation. So you, like say the scale inflation scale H could be as high as all the 10 to the 13 GeV, a, a energy scale that, okay, probably cannot reach with on earth, say. So if we can probe energy scale, that's like a very nice uh, example of inflationary, inflation mechanics tells you about new physics of a very high scale. Um, but at the price, we are no longer telling the universe what to do. We are not ready to put our hands on initial, initial state. Instead, uh, the initial state would be a bunch of like, just random walking fields, uh, like okay, a bunch of effectively massless field, okay, some, a bunch of bunch Davis vacuum, just propagate freely, and occasionally you will like create heavy particles, and it propagates with time, and eventually, okay, decays to many different things, and you can relate or translate different fields with, like maybe if it's axion, maybe you can translate with isocurvature. Or maybe it's inflaton, so it's like curvature, or maybe it's a uh, like for example a, a vector with some uh, with some uh, like tachyonic instability. So maybe you can generate gravitational wave with it. Many different many different uh, mechanisms. Like these fields, eventually the inference uh, would be like say just on like the inference on the surface of reheating. It would be frozen and eventually will all pick up at larger scales. So there are certain like key differences. First of all, the initial state is no longer again a like okay momentum eigen state. Uh, the interference, like say, because all these fields freely propagate, like besides from creating heavy particles, most of the time just like freely propagates to the end. So you always on the surface, you always find something to interfere with. So instead of like always observing the amplitude square, you actually observe the amplitude, or you could observe the amplitude including the phase. Uh, but in the meantime, the time invariance is like break down by, well, like clearly by the inflation. Uh, so there would be no more invariant masses. So you need to find something else, okay, if you want to claim a discovery. So here is a closer look into that. Um, so first of all, as we have mentioned this like three point correlator. So you need to find tr three different modes as like, like this graph right here as a triangle. So at the very beginning, a mode that's just like as a production, you just kick like some of the heavy particles out of nowhere, like just borrow energy from the inflationary background. And then they start to like propagate and the case. So you immediately find if you want a amplitude, this amplitude is thermally suppressed. So, okay, ignoring all the details, uh, this is because this is the standard, um, like say, Boltzmann suppression, and the, because the, this is the particle number, so this amplitude squares, so the amplitude 
that you actually observe is actually uh, roughly speaking, like e to the pi m over h suppressed. So this is something to keep in mind. You have some suppression. And uh, the next thing is uh, the decay, uh, as I indicated, right, is usually happens later. And uh, if you want to satisfy uh, this resonance production and the decay uh, condition, uh, then the k decay modes uh, needs to be longer. So you're living in this so-called squeeze limit. So this triangle is rather squeezed. And once you fix the, the ratio, you can plug in the numbers uh, and you would see, uh, for example, the conformal time of the decay and the, the ratio between the decay conformal time and the, the production conformal time follow a certain mode. Like say, basically it's the, the, the ratio between K modes. And you also take into account that the propagators actually, okay, you follow this quantum uh, quantum mechanics rule, like say just as an internal clock. So this is why it's so called like clock signal. So by observing the phase difference is directly related to the time difference and the, therefore the ratio of case. And you plug in all the, all the math and you'll find that uh, if you change the ratio of the, the, the squeeze triangle, you will find the fluctuation behavior, which is directly related to the mass. Similar to like, so you find a bump, but you find a characteristic um, frequency instead. Uh, a final comment is like, if you do that at the loop, so like the particles are protected by Z2 symmetry or it's simply a fermion also, uh, everything gets doubled and you specifically double by double the suppression and the double the, the frequency. Uh, also, you pay the price of loop factor. So usually it's much harder to look at, but it's not hopeless. And then this is uh, just some nice schematics uh, made, I think, mostly right here. Uh, but this is uh, basically what you expect. Okay, of course, they, they follow different rules and then there are a lot of details, but you see these fluctuations and this is equivalently seeing a heavy particle. So now you may get sufficiently bugged by the fact that, okay, you're always, okay, Boltzmann suppressed. So why bother, like say, if you cannot really probe anything heavy? Uh, I have to say, this is the one of the, one of the key thing in modern cosmological uh, collider physics is to find a ways to go beyond the, the Boltzmann suppression. So there are multiple ways to do that. Uh, here, like say just a, 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 a incomplete list maybe, uh, but there are certain ways. And uh, in this paper, we actually used uh, two, uh, okay, well accepted ways, either using the chemical potential or a classical feature. So a chemical potential, um, is that if the rolling field is going to fuel the production of a certain, okay, helicity, for example, um, just like in Schringer effect, you have the large E field, like generating some, like a compensating chemical potential for heavy particles. So if the E field is large enough, then the electrons or charged particles could be pair produced, even like the temperature is low. Right here, it's like similar. So you have a rolling field that fuels the production by sacrificing, like, Okay, or suppressing the production, you, you like for one part, uh, you greatly enhance the occupation number of another one. Or you can imagine, you can increase the classical feature. So right here, the in like the inflaton potential is not flat actually. So because you are you have no fundamental knowledge of the like the in inflaton potential, so it may live in a multi field. Uh, like space and then you have like a lot of different possibility of trajectories. If some of these trajectories like admit the sharp term or like a certain key features, as long as the time scale, characteristic time scale of such features are short enough to excite the heavy fields, then uh, like, okay, heavy modes can be excited classically and they generate signal for you. Or the third one is like a slow motion where the like the sound speed is much smaller, but that's like a, a quite different from like the previous aspect. Um, and I'm not gonna uh, talk about that further. So as mentioned, we have two, both ways employed. And during the process, uh, our selling point here is we do not introduce a lot of analysis. We do not introduce new fields and the stuff, just inflaton 
and Axion, uh, basically. So let's see how we do that. Uh, so this is the first scenario where you use the classical feature to help uh, the production. So this is the Lagrangian, and you see this is pretty much the same as the, the previous one, right? Even this one looks exactly the same, right? Though, like, say the sign difference, but this is arbitrary because the C can also change sign. Um, and that you create this like uh, feature, like you can admit a sharp term in if you admit more fields, but that's more complicated. So here we use uh, for many reasons, uh, primarily for for computational uh, uh, workloads, we admit a FOIA feature, which is a step in the potential, uh, like this, like a heavy side function. Um, similar things has been like discussed in, in many different papers for like many different. Uh, purposes, uh, but let let's say okay, such a feature exists, like a a, a, a short uh, like a very short time scale. Like when the axion rolls through this feature, it will suddenly accelerate and then relax. But this uh, sudden acceleration would excite heavy fields, and then this heavy field, which will play as a mediator, right? As okay, the heavy mediator I've just mentioned in in the previous pictures would be the roll, which is the radial mode. Of the infant time, right? You originally motivated derivative coupling from a shift shimmet way of the infrared, but you now introduce seven feature in the potential. Yes, we see the battery by the shift shimmet. Yes, this is the feature. Or... Yeah, so this is um, the classical feature itself, by definition, necessarily like a violate the shift symmetry. So mm -hmm. that's like something we admit. And the right here, we introduced one uh, just to. Uh, say make the calculation easier so in practice let's say because what we want is actually an excitation of the heavy field which is living in the axion sector mm -hmm. so you can imagine maybe some other mechanisms like say mm -hmm. a hidden hidden uh, sector or spectator phase transition could mm -hmm. also fuel that mm -hmm. but here is just an example for our calculation mm -hmm. and then we can discuss that like later yeah because i'm not 100 percent satisfied with this but this is the Good thing because the computation is complicated, so this is easier for us. You don't have like a lot of uh, numerical things to worry about. Uh, but let's go back to the, the previous picture. So the uh, infoton, like say we subtract the background rolling. So the infoton perturbation uh, initially is before the okay the time of okay the feature is just sitting at zero, and then all of a sudden get accelerated, and then uh, relax to uh, what it should be. And for the role, it suddenly get excitation, and then like this oscillation damps away, just like okay, like dark matter. You like say this damps at uh, like say a to the minus uh, three over two. So it's basically classically particles get produced uh, through this uh, effective mass perturbation. So before we even go to the three point correlate, this actually. Uh, things starting to come in at the two point correlators because you classically generate these heavy particles, and these heavy particles they have couplings, and then eventually they decay to stuff before they can reach the uh, like the heating surface. We are talking about large scale structures here. Um, so, by doing the perturbative expansions uh, at the second order, you will find such terms that these fluctuations, okay, as a classical uh, feature couples to either the right because this is the radial mode of the PQ field it naturally couples to the axion because this is just the self interaction to make a map of the axion vector and the, through this like effective coupling like by this combination of constant uh, couples to infoton so it can decay to two infoton which can be translated as okay feature in curvature uh, or uh, yeah curvature um, uh, okay, uh, spectrum or like isocurvature spectrum. And inherently, because this combination of constants need to be smaller than what for many good reasons, otherwise, the, the field become ill defined after inflation, etc. This needs to be smaller than what it the couples to the axion is actually larger, and therefore, relatively speaking, the feature in isocurvature would be larger. So this is a maybe okay, not very exact, but I think it's a useful way of saying that is inflation right here is playing a role of an instrument like a trumpet, 
And if you just blow a pipe, like without any feature in it, you'll barely make any noise. But if you put something like a reed right here, like say with the characteristic scale, which is smaller than the, the, the target wavelength you, you want, you start to make voices. And here is like, okay, I would use the words like a music of dark matter because in music you have first harmonics, second harmonics, etc. right here, you, you'll see the same thing. And then because they're coming from the same set of fluctuation, classical fluctuation of rho, they share the same phase, but different amplitudes because of the uh, different couplings. And the, usually the, the fluctuation in isocurvature is larger. Uh, and then this is the standard clock because um, if you just plug in, like say, all the numerics, you'll find the mass of the radio modes actually show up right here as the uh, frequency of this fluctuation. And okay, further comments numerically. So you may worry these so features. So the, the mass of the radio mode is on the order of h, uh, just, just by by choice. Uh, it's not on the order of uh, h. It could be order tens of h. But uh, in this setup, because we move everything by partial phi, so it's probably not going to exceed, uh, like say, sixty h or much more. But roughly speaking, uh, in the ballpark, do not have to be h. What happened to the Boltzmann factor? Uh, what happens to there's no Boltzmann factor right here because we have the classical feature. So actually, you have this amplitude. This amplitude dominates everything. You do not need to discuss the Boltzmann suppression here because it's classically produced. You just simply have the equation of motion. So people like say there are quite Sorry, this is produced as a classical theorem. Yeah. So it oscillates as a classical. Theorem. Yeah. So that's why you have like a uniform phase, like and they are correlated. So one thing that makes we make us excited is that like say if you see these fluctuations and then one day you see same thing in curvature and isocurvature, this is a hint of what could be going on. Uh, or if you see the reverse, then you need to change your theory, of course. So now the observational hint is that these features in curvature, which is like in, some, in this picture is inevitable, not always the case, but currently many, okay, relevant studies indicate because we are limited by cosmic variance. So in some sense, they, there are quite some parameter space that survives and uh, uh, depends on, okay, what's your attitude? You may say that some of these like the features are actually preferred by uh, this part is not cosmic variance suppressed. Right? Uh, uh, yeah, so not, this large, is L, the, large L is not large L is not, but okay. Yeah. Uh, I think some so of the targets saying, like where you can also insert this L as L, like around twenty seven. So you you want me to you 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 want me to see oscillations in these uh, these data? Um, you think that there is oscillation in? I mean, the, 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 according to the, the, they the, are not. According to them, they they think that there are oscillations in. in they think there are oscillations. My take is these are not veto that is. These possibilities okay. do exist, and uh, there are something like so if you put the oscillation. But they they want to say this is a hint. This is a. They want to say this is a hint, and I want to say this is possible. How should I see oscillations in these? Things? This is the best fit, and uh, well, we can talk about this later. I'm not the expert. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't yeah, know. I have. <laughs> what I can say is, like, currently we are targeting uh, some similar things. Okay, but okay, in like in isocurvature instead, and to see if the isocurvature uh, could be the the leading leading observation. Um, so now we go to the the three part correlators, and uh, uh, previously me and my collaborators is trying to okay build like cosmological colliders, but okay, with, okay, not only curvature, but isocurvature. So here is an example. Uh, for example, in this case, um, because the Z2 symmetry of the axion, right? You flip chi with like uh, chi star, it doesn't, okay, the, the Lagrange is invariant. So the axion must show up in pairs. So like the correlation must be in the form, the three-point correlations either have zero isocurvature or like, two curvature in the external X. And uh, this is how you're gonna do that. So you expand the, like say the perturbations, these series, and you find you can inject these classical features in the two point mixing uh, uh, vertices, or you can inject uh, this feature 
uh, in the free point of okay self interacting uh, vertices. All right, then it's like a bunch of calculations and okay we make this analytical approximation. So it's not perfect, but at least you can see the analytical approximation predicts the average amplitudes of these uh, uh, like three point correlators and the, the frequency um, quite well. And they, in some sense, they are quite large in terms of like, okay, all the one or so, but these are involving ISO curvature. So observation, observability is actually weaker. So we cannot see this yet, but maybe in the future with uh, like advanced techniques. All right, so I, I only have okay maybe 10 minutes, okay. Um, I need to move on to the second scenario, which is like living in a different end. Um, we use different uh, different mechanisms to like, okay, go over this Boltzmann suppression uh, using the chemical potential. So the Lagrangian is all the same pieces, and then now uh, we couple the inflaton with this PQ current. So this is a it still respect the U1 PQ symmetry uh, explicitly right here. And then so you can't have a chemical potential for a scalar. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not the chemical, but so yeah, that's why I, we have a chemical potential for fermions instead of scalar, but I will explain. But this is a scalar, right? Yeah, yeah, but but these would couples to fermions later on, right? It must couples to some fermions, right? As as the standard story of axions. Um so. These are okay, certainly will introduce the kinetic mixing between the massless axion mode as a phase and also the effectively massless but still must be massive inflata. So, after okay, this canonical uh, expression, this canonical role stays the same, and the canonical axion actually picks up small contribution from the inflata. And the this is Z is a again. Get a smaller than one combination of constants for many good reasons. And the A tilde, this canonical one, would convert to isocurvature later. And the picture is such that if you okay, study the, the, the classical EOM of all these fields, A will stay the same. Okay, so A dot is still zero, just like okay, what an axion should do. But this A field to keep A tilde still zero must okay roll like in the opposite way of. Phi. And because the kinetic mix uh, in this case, and you do not want to violate CP directly, then phi is a pseudo scalar, but that's not a big deal. And here, instead of using rho, like say the radial mode as a mediator, now the mediator is another natural piece in axiom theory, as mentioned, this is a KSBC type of theory. Um, the peak is like the peak of symmetry, uh, uh, like is like a carried by some vector like quarks that's like like which eventually need to introduce the coupling um, to QCD. So in that case, the okay, this coupling, okay, after you plug in everything, the A, original A, could be translated as the canonical axiom A tilde and the phi. So in that case, the linear combination of axiom and inflaton will couple to this uh, axial vector current of fermions. So only because we introduced this term, right? The rest of pieces come into play automatically. And this, because you couple like a rolling field to a non-conserved current. So as the field rolls, you basically create charges. And then right here, the charge is basically the helicity of, okay, because non-conserved of the fermions. Uh, the, the mathematical structure, if you look at this, uh, is actually quite similar to the Schrodinger effect where the chemical potential is created not by the rolling field, but by the, like say the large uh, uh, E field. So you introduce this chemical potential and uh, you have again a phi dot over fi as long as the phi dot, phi dot must be large, we know that, and the Z is not very small and fi is not very large, then this could be sufficiently larger than the mass of the fermions. And then once this is satisfied, you go over this um, um, uh, Boltzmann suppression and uh, now only okay minorly suppressed okay you stop by the Pauli blocking and uh, this is like some previous studies say uh, the particle production is actually you can use use like multiple ways to show that the particle production is localized for each mode uh, like say just right here and you plug in the time of production and the decays and you get this vector 
let's see, phi is the setting of platon. Uh, phi is the input time. So the natural value of phi dot will be f times h times epsilon. <laughs> and the mu is of the, the sort of parameter times h. And then let's see, <laughs> how can we compensate the separation? Uh, so let's say phi dot, we let, let's say if we all agree that phi dot is 60 H, like in the standard picture. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And fi is a little bit arbitrary, right? Like in this case, you need to name an fi because we haven't known it yet. It could be order 10 or it could be order one, it could be much larger. So as long as fi is, let's say fi is around 60 H, then this is 3,600 over 60. And then this is 0.1, then this is six. So it's action is actually the, the, the right here of uh, the angular direction of some complex scale of field. Yes. So phi dot is at the most uh, phi is the yeah. inflaton, right? This is the this is ah, okay, okay. This is the fi is the axiom, so it's different. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So you just kinetic mix them, but doesn't mean like say the fi is still like uh, it's the radium, like C, the values of radium. C for you must be small. Uh, yeah. C for you is 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 uh, Z for you, Z must be small. Yeah, order point one, but you can you can pay for the price. It's not not terrible. Because otherwise, you are you are. Yeah, Z must be smaller than one, as mentioned. Yeah, yeah. So did the, they the have full UV completion? And you introduce just cut of scale and say that it's yeah. small. Did they have UV completion? They probably just introduce the color. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because, it, because, it's, it's because very difficult to have a this kind of enhancement that you yeah. there. Can we just proceed? Maybe we can. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. I can proceed. Yeah. So it is just near the end of the talk. Okay. Anyways, so eventually, okay. Well, I'm omitting all the numerical details. Um, I have done some of them in the backup slides, uh, but what's the picture is that in a vacuum, because of the rolling field, like say, with the help, you pop up like a pair of fermions would pop up and eventually annihilate and close the loop. And at each point, you attach the linear combination of curvature and isocurvatures. So in this sense, you excite, like say, all the modes, but they are this closely related. Right here is basically by these combinations. So it depends on like, if beta is smaller because we only have upper limit, or like a Z is smaller, then either the full isocurvature mode would be the largest, uh, or like say, full curvature one would be the largest. But the curvature modes are okay, more often uh, easier to observe. Uh, but the signals could be sizable. Uh, like say, okay, all these parameters are still legal nowadays. And then you look at the full ISO curvature, three-point correlations, and then look at the FNLs. Um, you would find, okay, for different benchmarks, uh, 0.4 is less than one. Uh, you may happy or not happy about it, but it's much smaller than, okay, you have like suppressions, then you have hard times uh, looking for them. Uh, but in general, it could be like pump up to like say 0.01 or like say even close to 0.1. And the fourth three, like say if you, it's curvature, 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 then it could be larger because in this case, the beta is small. So, so this is the second scenario and all across the uh, discussion, I have to say, if you believe in the QCX in story, then you're living in this regime. So it's not yet, Excluded maybe in the future by uh, helioscope, but you can this all these may apply to axion like particles with yet another free parameter and not necessarily the couplings that you need. Uh, but here is just X, QCD axion as, a, as an example, then it's easier for discussion. And uh, at the last slide, I have to admit I cheated a little bit um, because for the sizable isocurvature hybrid signals. You need to, um, let's say, have F A over H around the ballpark of phi dot, at least not much larger. Otherwise, you pay a parametric suppression, uh, let's say, several powers of F A over H, H over F A suppression. So if you take this benchmark, um, and you would see, because the, you need to have a small beta, and the only way, or the only easy way, you can suppress iso curvature. Right, because F A over H is not very small. So you, if you want to suppress it, you need to like uh, pay the price of a small dark matter fraction. So in this case, the gamma is all the 10 to the minus three. So you uh, X N is making a small fraction of the total dark matter, but it's fine. You have 
so many dark matters. You can just, if you have your favorite model, you just plug it in. But your axion is a is a mixture of uh, two of those stuff. Uh, yes, but after the inflation, like say the the perturbations just of the inflaton just settled at uh, a zero point. So yeah, but the, so the fluctuation will just like be the a tilde. Your, your canonical yeah the canonical axion field yeah is a is a is a mixture between the between the original axion yes and and some uh, some uh, yeah some some input yeah yeah but but it doesn't affect the uh, like say the, the yeah, because after inflation yeah. the become the, the yeah yeah it's just a in a number and it doesn't matter um, another thing I want to mention is that maybe, okay, this is like maybe suggest a way to pin down the inflationary scale, like say independent or like not necessarily with the observation of tensor to scalar ratio. Um, the, the logic is that you have the FA by other ways. We know that's from coupling, of course, certain belief comes in. For example, like if you have solar axioms and you can okay, predict from the uh, like say the rate of axion or like say the frequencies, the mass conditions, whatever. So you have the size of FA from elsewhere and the H over FA, the ratio, uh, okay, is a rough sense. Okay, if you, okay, you take the self-coupling to be order one, uh, then from cosmological either observables, the many frequencies and the ratios between different correlations, you may get H over FA and you combine these to get an absolute range of H, not very precise, but maybe it's a good chance. So here I'm gonna summarize. Uh, okay, these are take-home messages. Um, yeah, but, but that's all the things of my talk. Thank you. Yes, I have some questions. Uh, Any more? Did you ensure that um, the uh, the correction to the inflaton kinetic term from the from your fermion loop is small in this case? Yes, like uh, the the c as long as c is like sufficiently away from one, mm -hmm. and the by the parameter choice, like the loop corrections are perturbed. Okay. So then we don't need to care about the direct. Yes. I'm a little bit lost on the cosmological kinder story. So, is the cosmological kinder signal related to the term that you gave heavy lifting mechanism? Was that the same interaction? Yeah. So, like, let, let's okay for this picture, right? Uh, if if we we take this picture, uh, let's say so. This term comes from inflaton, right? Inflaton and uh, okay, PQ field coupling. So. In the in the minimalist theory, right, they are not coupled, or like say it's coupled through gravity. So effective lambda is left like M Planck or so, then this is very small. So we introduce this in the direction. Yes, we rely on that coupling. That's why we introduce that like initially. Or you can have okay, maybe without that, you can have like a four-point correlators of ISO curvatures, okay, where you only need the self-couplings and uh, some perturbations that you introduce, okay, elsewhere, but that's hard to observe. If you want the hybrid, you need to couple these things and write it in the form of effective theories, but you may have better ideas. And the number on the left side is gonna be FHI related? Uh, yeah, so the lambda here, we also take it to be like, say, like a few times of like a square root by lot. Therefore, the theory is like still healthy. It's a, it's not a, it's not a UV choice. It's just a for, for legal uh, EFT. Yeah, for legal the, EFT, it yes. has to be bigger than square root by dot. Okay, but usually you just choose it as close to that as possible. Yeah, to, to, to get a larger signal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't care about the size of the signal, yes, you can have like a lot of UV discussions. But okay, yeah, probably it's very hard to find. Yeah. Okay. 
if uh, you know, I'm just I'm thinking about this last few comments you made about um, if you're trying to pin certain things down. For example, you were saying if you find FA from another, you know, from drug detection, and then you can maybe pin, pin down the Hubble scale. So this depends on a QCD axion perspective, right? Um, for yes. Otherwise, for ALP, then you introduce yet another. Right, then you have two parameters yeah. at least. So I'm always with some loopholes. So we are not like okay, saying this is an absolute thing. Yeah. Right. So so in that scenario, when you do think of it as just some axion-like particle, is there anything you could do there, or now you're just now you can just say, well, this opens up for what the interpretation of the signal is, assuming you get some cosmological lighter signal. So for the cosmological lighter signal, okay, if you okay take this, some some certain priors in your mind of the, the self coupling, then you always have this. Now is the okay, just do your best to pin down this. So so <laughs> should be some some hint, right? Like say from the frequencies or whatever. But this okay, again becomes less. Uh, Okay, let's know. But okay, I think from, for example, like say solar axion rays, okay, probably you, you still have some, some hints about this, right. but it's only related to the coupling of standard model. And stuff. Okay. But it's not absolute. Okay, there are moving parts. So yeah. this is just a suggestion. If you're, if you're in the QCD scenario, though, then the moving parts are a lot easier to handle, right? Hope so. I mean, especially even this, like this caveat that you need to have it not be too much dark matter. In the QCD axion scenario, you can you can understand well. Of course, I found this FA, and so it had to be this small amount of dark. Yeah, that's that's the that's the reason. Like, say, you basically have this gamma and the beta constraints first, and, and that's why you live there. Yeah. yeah. But for but but for the like uh, for the ALPs, basically, you you only limit it by this one. Or if you admit some non-trivial like thermal interplay between the field values and uh, like X. Like a dark matter relax density, then this could be even relaxed. Yeah, that's yeah. another story. Right, right, right. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? If not, let's think. Uh, thank Ling Fong again. What is the name of that game? That, 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 that video game. Pac Man. Pac -Man? Why are you always well? Why why what are these all just attackment symbols? <laughs>